Hey TD Superheroes, I'm Alejandro Perez, your sidekick, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating loops. We're going to be doing examples of how loops work, and then we'll go through and build an example using Maya. Alright, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is for loops. And for loops go through and iterate through something based off of how much of that something there is. So, for example, we have this here. So, we have a list of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and we're creating a for loop number in numbers. So, numbers here is, is this variable, then this is a variable also that we're using, but it's going to represent each time this loops, one of these values. So that's why we can use number over here because each time it loops through number is going to change and we're going to see that printed value. So let's run this and we can see it prints out one, two, three, four, five. So it's accessing and using each one of these elements inside of the list one at a time. Okay, now let's take a look at using a for loop using range. So this is a common way to do something that you want to go through a certain number of times based off of a range. So we have this variable that we've created here again number so that we can print that out. Then we have range here and range is what is changing. So this gives us a range of numbers. We have a start an end and an increment. So let's see what this gives us really quick. You can see that we go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we don't see the number 11 because once it gets to 11, that is the last thing that is ran. But let's take a look at if we change the increment. So again, we have the start, the end, and the increment. And now we run this and you can see that it's going every two elements. If we do three, every third element. Now, if we just did range five like this and ran this, you can see that it starts off and runs five times. So this is another way to do it. It starts off at zero and then it ends off on the fifth time. So it does run five times when you do range five, but remember that the first value is actually zero. So the number counting starts at zero. The other type of loop we have access to inside of Python is using a while loop. So you're doing something while a condition is true. This is the condition here. So while the number, which we created a variable for here, we set it to one, is less than or equal to five. So we print out the number and then we increment the number. So this plus equals means that we're going to increment it by whatever this value is. So this is something you have to be really careful. You need to make sure that at some point this is going to actually become true because if not, you can be stuck in an infinite loop that will run forever and basically at that point you have to close out Maya because your computer will be stuck in an infinite loop and it won't be able to do anything. So if we run this here, you can see it prints out one, two, three, four, five. It looped over it five times. Now let's take a look at creating an example using loops inside of Maya. First thing I'm going to do is get a selection. So let's give ourselves some objects to select. Okay, so we have all these objects selected right now. If we run this, it's just going to store that into the variable selection, but it's not going to do anything with it yet. Okay, now next we're going to create a variable we're going to actually set all of our objects down at the origin and then space them out x units apart from each other. And we're going to start off at the x value of 0. Now 
we're going to start the loop. This is going to be a for loop. And in this for loop, we are going to basically set the attributes of the X, Y, and Z for the objects that we have selected. So we're going to be iterating through the selection. And each time it iterates through, we're going to get a object, an individual object. So here. Okay, now we're going to set the parameters for that object. And the set adder is how we set an attribute. Then we have the object name, which we'll get from the selection. And then we're going to add the actual attribute that we want to change our axis. So we're going to put dot translate x. And if you didn't know that was the actual value for a object, we can kind of go into the channel box, run it, and you can see that it gives us the object name dot and then translate x. So then we can set it to a value. The translate x, we're going to set it to whatever the x value is. And right now it will just set everything to zero. And let's verify that. We're just going to just run this whole code here. And you can see that it puts everything all at zero, zero, zero. So these y and z values, we're actually setting it to zero as well, but we are hard coding those. The only thing that we really want to change is the X here. So I'm going to undo that over there. And then we are going to add a line here and we're going to increment each of the X values by five. So this plus equals again is equal to X equals whatever X is plus five. Okay, so let's select all of this and run it. And we can see that now we align everything five units apart along the x-axis. This is a kind of useful tool if you wanted to be able to kind of lay out all of your elements in a scene and be able to clearly see them and be able to find them easily just to kind of evaluate or render an example of what is in your scene individually. So that is an option that you can do. All right. I hope you found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.